All right, what's up? Welcome. I have another special guest. Uh, I have Isabel here. Uh, Isabel and I were just chatting a few minutes before, and uh, yeah, I'm just so glad she's on the channel to share her story. So, Isabel, welcome. Thank you so much, Sean, for having me here. I'm so excited to share my story and to inspire others. And it's just, it's an honor to be here. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Of course, of course. So, Isabel, let's start from the very beginning. Actually, before we even start, could you tell me, like, what were the most, like, what were your, like, strongest symptoms when it came to, like, anxiety? Like, what did you experience? Um, You know what? I had a bunch, but the one that tops the list, I'd say it's um the frequent panic attacks. Like, it was so intense that, I was trembling and I was, um, I had these tingling sensations, numbing sensations, and I had these anxiety zaps and I had it for like almost 24 seven for weeks. And it was so hard because I couldn't do anything at all. And I couldn't, I couldn't go anywhere because of it. And I feel like because of it, I developed, um, I developed a few more um, symptoms that was really, really uncomfortable, like um, breathlessness, um, anxiety zaps. Um, I couldn't feel my, 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 my arms. I couldn't feel my legs. And it's just, I felt useless, useless. And I felt like I'm going crazy or I'm sick or broken. And I, it felt like, it felt like I, I was going to be like that forever. And because of that, I also, um, it also morphed into agoraphobia. So I was, I was so afraid of leaving my home. So for example, if I'm in a grocery store, there's this nagging feeling of wanting to escape. It's supposed to be a neutral space, right? But there's this nagging feeling of wanting to escape and wanting to go home and to be safe. When in fact, I am safe. I am safe and um, it's just weird and irrational and it's not something that I've had ever in my life so um, I've had that so every time my family goes on trips I would feel restless and I feel uneasy and I I just want to be home in my bed I don't want to go out and so I felt I felt kind of depressed because of it because I love I love going outdoors. I love traveling. And um, it's just a part of my life that I love that I can't do anymore. And so um, I also had this weird fear of um, losing consciousness. So I was afraid of falling into sleep. And I was afraid of fainting. I was afraid of basically losing consciousness. Like, I felt like if I gave in, like that's the end of me. <laughs> that was so irrational. And I didn't know that that kind of fear existed. And so it morphed into other fears. Like I feared, um, I feared loud noises. It was, I was too sensitive. I was too sensitive about bright light, loud noises and all these things. And also I had DPDR. That was, that was crazy. That was, it was, it's kind of cool to experience that at least once in my life, but it's not something that I would wish for, but it's something that I, oh my gosh, I finally understand, I finally understand what they're saying in textbooks and what they're saying. Cause I was a psych major and I've read these things, but never in my life did I think that I would actually go through it. And so, um, I felt like everything is, everything is blurry. Like the person next to me feels like he's unreal or like I'm in a mental haze and everything's blurry. There's a blur like um, um, I can't even look straight in the mirror. I can't see myself clearly and it's just so weird. It's like I'm distant from everything and everyone and it was just just the combination of these symptoms made me feel like I'm broken and that I'm going crazy and that I wouldn't, I was um, 28 then last year. And so I'm like, I'm too young to die. I'm too young to go crazy. And it's just, 
depressing for me, not being able to live life the way I used to. So uh, yeah, these were these were the symptoms that were really a struggle to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was panic attacks too. So it was panic attacks. And then the panic attacks led to like health anxiety because I was getting physical symptoms. And that's when the agoraphobia would kick in because I was afraid of um, like getting a panic attack. And then I would start thinking about all these things, just like you, like, honestly, the, even the consciousness thing, um, I know exactly what you mean. Cause I was trying to think it through. Yeah. And there's this, yeah, I know what you mean. And there's this one more, I, I uh, forgot to tell you, this is like one of the symptoms that stuck with me beginning to end digestive issues. I, I told you this. I've had digestive issues because of it. And I lost so much weight. Like I'm already skinny to begin with. And I lost like seven kilos or like 15 pounds in a, in a matter of two weeks. Yeah. And that was intense because, because my mom thought that it was a gut issue or like a nutritional issue. And she's like, so my mom's vegan. And she's like, oh, you have to go raw vegan maybe it'll solve your gut problems i'm like are you serious so all i all i took in was fruit shakes um boiled potatoes boiled bananas boiled veggies soup that's it for weeks and i'm like this isn't working it's only making it worse and i look how skinny i am yeah you lose more weight that's what happened to me i tried the same thing and i actually lost more weight i was there was a day i had I had like 18 bananas and that was it. Oh I was my like, God. Yeah, it was. So, and I was like just dropping weight nonstop. It was, um, I was so desperate. It's, it's. I thought I was the only one. No, honestly, I've said it so many times that like I went like vegan because I read that would help. And then I read, oh, no, no, no. You're supposed to go raw vegan. And so I was just eating fruits and vegetables and I was just like, and I was so skinny. Like I lost about 45 pounds. And like, I, I mean, you've seen the photos and stuff. I was just like super, super skinny and I'm not a big guy. And so, um, Isabel, how did it start? Let's go from the very beginning. Uh, you kind of mentioned okay. a little bit how it started, but could you elaborate a bit more? Okay. So it began in January, 2021. And it was just a regular day at work. So I was just working and it was after lunch and out of nowhere. My heart was raising and my vision dim. And so I had a panic reaction to it. And so I was panicking, going, going back and forth, my desk. And then my my workmates, they noticed and they're like, are you okay? I'm like, no, is it hot in here? I think I'm hyperventilating. I think something is wrong with me. And they're like, oh, so, so they're like, oh, we have to bring you to the clinic. And I'm like, yeah, please do. I feel like I'm dying there's something wrong with me and then I felt like I was gonna faint but I didn't and so they brought me there and then the, the nurse checked my blood pressure and my heart rate and my heart rate was like at 120 or 130 which is like not the usual and she's like did you run what did you do what did, did you take the stairs <laughs> And I'm like, no, it's just my heart is racing. And my BP is not the usual. So it was 140 over 90. And that's not usual for me. I'm like, what's happening to me? But she's like, oh, maybe you're having a panic attack. But at that time, it didn't occur to me that I was having a panic attack. I didn't understand what was happening to me. And so I, I didn't know how, what to do with it. So I was sent home. and. Um, when I was sent home to rest, I still felt uncomfortable for hours, and I didn't, I didn't understand why. But um, so that was a weekend. That was a Friday, and then my family had to go on a weekend trip, and then I went, and then there were no symptoms at all, no symptoms at all. And then after a few days, um, after um, resting after that trip, out of nowhere again, I've got these um, digestive issues that I didn't understand. <laughs> like it's out of the blue and it felt like my, my gut is on fire and my throat is on fire. And I felt like drowning. 
So I'm like, what's wrong with me? I don't, I don't understand. This is not usual. And it's the first time that I'm, you know, experiencing these things. And that's pretty much how I got into a cycle of panic attacks. After that day, that's when it really plummeted. Like it was, it was all a blur to me. <laughs> and I'm like, what's happening to me? All these symptoms are coming at me. Like, I don't understand what's going on. So um, I've had, you know, DPDR and panic attacks, a lot of those symptoms. I didn't have headaches, um, but I've had frequent zaps mm. towards my head, but it wasn't, I wouldn't say it's a headache, but it's like a electric zap. Yeah. Yeah. The you know brain I mean? Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it's a, Yeah. It's amazing. Like all the symptoms, everything I like. A lot of it I'd, I'd experienced as well. And I was also a psych major as well. So like it was, it was, yeah, right. And so before the mentorship, Isabel, what were some of the things that you tried? Like you kind of mentioned you like try to change your diet because you thought it was gut. What else, What other things did you try doing? Um, I went, so um, I was so confused because um, just a note, I was just a regular person with regular worries, with regular, you know, like, stresses so i didn't know how to navigate this it was the first time i encountered it and so i went from doctor to doctor i saw a psychologist i saw a psychiatrist i saw a, a heart doctor a gut doctor ent name it mm -hmm. and so um i even saw naturopaths those who um who were focused on you know um, natural remedies so they gave me lavender oils valerian root oh, that was disgusting <laughs> and um, they gave me all these supplements vitamin b vitamin d vitamin e, everything and so um it still didn't work none of it acupuncture didn't work um affirmations yeah it helped but it didn't work um it's it, it Everything I tried just gave me quick relief. Like, you know, I, I, I do, I practice yoga, right? It didn't even help um, my, I didn't, it didn't even help me uh, calm down. Um, what else? Meditation scripts. I've had, I've listened to uh, so much and there were some that were kind of disturbing. <laughs> like it's, like it's transporting me to a different dimension, those sort of things. It's so, I was so desperate. Um, I was um, looking at a list of anxiety podcasts, like which one's gonna help me, which ones make sense. I was filtering through YouTube videos. There were thousands and um, I was, oh, so my psychologist, she gave me, um, so she's the one who diagnosed me with panic disorder in Feb. And then I was like, okay, that makes sense. And then she's like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you grounding techniques. And because I think that you're, you're too focused on your internal sensations that you have to focus um, externally. And I'm like, but it's hard. I don't understand. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still in the dark. And she didn't explain to me um, how it really worked. She just gave me like a coping tool to help me cope through panic. Uh, yeah, to help me cope through panic when I feel it. But I was still searching for someone who can tell me what I was exactly going through and no one could do that for me. So my dad brought me to um, a psychiatrist and this guy just, you know, asked me about my past issues, my life issues, and how I, I coped with it or how I was coping with it, like a psychoanalysis of some yeah. sort. And I'm like, no, you're not getting it. That's not my problem. He's like, no, you're going to be fine. So I'm like, no, I, I know full well that I am not fine. So it was just so frustrating to hear that from him. And so I was kind of losing hope. And then I... And then I was, um, one of my doctors prescribed me um, some benzos, but I really didn't take it because I know I didn't want to be dependent. So um, 
they just all these doctors they just say oh it's just anxiety you just have to do yoga just continue what you're doing you just have to meditate and you'll be fine you just have you just need to get rest that's it and it's so I was kind of mad that they're supposed to be the experts and they can't even tell me what's going on with me that was like the most frustrating part of it of the journey um not having anyone understand so yeah so i've tried all these things oh also google yeah i i also googled a lot of my symptoms and uh, it really did help mm -hmm. It's so, it's so wild how you're in like the other part of the world and we experience the exact same thing. Like yeah. I went through naturopaths, chiropractors, acupuncturists, uh, psychiatrists, like same thing. And I couldn't get an answer for what was wrong. It, it was, it's, it's amazing actually, you know? Um, so Isabel, what was, what was your turning point? Um, so, okay. So when I was, when I was um, scrolling through Facebook, I was, I mean, YouTube, I came across Dr. Claire Wheat's audiobook. Mm. It's like, this, this, this doctor knows what she's saying. I initially thought she was a psychologist because she was, she was really, um, she was really, what she was saying was really resonating with me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, I know, I know about the churns. I know about these symptoms that she was talking about. She was talking about first fear and second fear, and it all really clicked to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so I want to, I want to hear more. And then, but it was a short clip that I listened to, and then I typed in, um, like anxiety recovery. And your video, it was actually Kaylee's video that I came across. Okay. Yeah. And then I listened a few minutes and I was so engaged because she, she, she knows exactly what I was going through. There's this, it, it's like, it's like, um, feeling relieved that finally someone knows or someone is going through or has went, went through what I, I'm going through. And so I finished the entire video. I think it lasted an hour and I'm like, oh, this is really um, amazing that I was led into this video. And I'm like, that was early on in my journey. That was March. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey, um, if I hadn't found Dr. Claire Weeks, oh, she also mentioned it in the video. That's why I'm like, hey, she knows Dr. Claire Weeks. So I'm going to listen further. Yeah. And then everything just clicked and I said, oh, I'm definitely going to um, join the community that she joined and I really want to get the kind of help that she got. And um, I believe her story and it's something that I wish uh, many more sufferers would do uh, because um, who knows who you're helping out because I find that in many um groups here in the Philippines all I see is you know them talking about their symptoms talking about how hard it is how how like they want to die or they're having a hard time they don't know what to do what to do but no one's really giving a solution it's yeah. just like oh try this try eating a marshmallow try anxiety um, breathing techniques all these things and it doesn't make sense to me like I've tried all of those and it doesn't work yeah so, yeah go ahead and it feels like I've come full circle I'm the one doing this interview with you <laughs> when um, shout out to Kaylee for she's what actually one of the first ones who helped me understand my health anxiety mm -hmm. she's very she was very fluent about, you know, um, the the biochemistry of anxiety, and she's the one who really uh, first explained to me how it how it goes. Yeah, yeah, Kaylee, Kaylee's amazing, and I know you were um you were with Mirka a lot too, because of the time. Yeah, yeah, yes, Mirka. She's like, um, she's at first when I when I first got on board like one of your members 
warned me. She's like, oh, you're gonna meet Mirka in a, in a, in a bit. And she's kind of intimidating, but, but I didn't feel that at all. No. I like Mirka the first time I met her. It's, it's the kind of person that I need, the kind of coach that I need in my life. I mean, I needed someone who would really tell me straight what I need to hear and what I need to recover because I don't need these coping um, coping techniques which will only make me uh, you know stay longer in the cycle so yeah. I appreciate Mirka she's she's really been consistent um, with me throughout my journey yeah yeah and she always told me she was like hey Sean like Isabel she's doing amazing and I was like, really? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, I could tell this, but, and I could tell cause like we were in the community, right? So you were posting a lot. So I was like, man, Isabel's really crushing it. And America's like, yeah, she's on my calls. <laughs> like she's doing well. And I was like, I was like, you know, and you, you, um, you know, being in the mentorship, I, I just saw you really do really well. Like I, I felt like I'm sure I know there were ups and downs. And I know, I remember you asking me questions about certain things and how to respond to those things. But in the grand scheme of it all, I thought you just did so well. Like, I mean, it was just like, you were, you were very compliant. And that's hard because when people are like really struggling, like how you're talking about, like when people are going through anxiety, they're so internally focused that even if you tell them the answer and try to give it, like try to explain it to them, it's hard for them to understand because they're just so internally focused. But you, I felt like, again, you just, there were some aha moments that you had and you really, in my opinion, really did really well um, in terms of like implementing what Mirka and Kaylee were saying. Um, what do you think, like, what do you think that why, why do you think that was? Okay. so. Um, I'm not sure if you remember, but I, I think I've shared that I'm Christian. Mm -hmm. And I'd say this verse was my springboard for recovery. And mm -hmm. I'd say this, it took faith. It took faith. So Mark 5.34 went, daughter, it's your faith that'll heal you. And I'm like, this attitude of faith, like really got me going into recovery real quick because I had faith in my God, like I had faith that he who gave me the capability to fear can also bring me peace. Mm -hmm. And I had faith in my body that I was intelligently designed and that I can heal. I am capable of healing. And most of all, I had faith in my mentors. I had faith in the community, in you, in Mirka, in Kaylee, and Caesar, and all the rest. Because without it, like, in any relationship, trust is important, right? And in, especially in helping relationships, it's really important. Otherwise, we're not gonna get anywhere. I had faith in your guidance and whatever you said, I had faith in it. And I just really trusted the process and just trusted that you will hold me by the hand and guide me through recovery and that I will make it out. Remember, I, I, I asked you about like a certain topic about maybe uncertainty or something. And then you like, oh, whatever life throws at you, you'll make it or you can handle it. And that stuck with me. And I'm like, OK, Sean believes that I can. And so I did. And more importantly, I believe that I can. And so I did. Like people ask me or like they, they comment. Oh, maybe you're just so much stronger than I am. Or maybe you're just mentally stronger. Or no, I, I was, you know, um, I think I've shared this with Mirka, but in the past, I went through abuse and trauma. And I almost, I almost blamed my anxiety to that. But I know that um, it's a different issue. And so I would overthink a lot. And I was like, the most negative person you'd meet. And I've, I've, um, I would usually catastrophize and overthink and think of the worst scenarios and I'd prepare for it. So I wouldn't say I was positive or mentally strong. I wouldn't say that, but um, it's just, I think the secret is my will to, 
to heal and live outweighed um, the momentary discomfort of anxiety. Yeah. That, that's it. I remember you um, telling me or asking us to imagine um, how we would live life if we didn't have anxiety. And that stuck with me. I'm like, okay, so the formula is to make life bigger than anxiety, regardless of how I felt. So I trusted what you said and I um, executed that. And I'm like, okay, so whatever, whatever I feel, I just have to be out there doing life, doing what I love. And so I did. And so a year later, here I am. I just, it really just took faith and consistency and the right formula. So Isabel, how is your life now? Like, what are some of the things you're doing right now? Oh, I'm just regular me. I'm back to my old self, but with a different mindset. Like whatever life throws at me, it's just like I told you in America, it's, it, it felt like a rebirth. It's just, I'm a new person with this new mindset. And so because I've gone through the worst of anxiety, even low grade um, regular anxiety is better managed. I, I respond better to um, difficult situations or stressful situations. And I respond better to my emotions um, generally. And so that's the biggest thing that I, I, I got from this um, coaching program is that a, a new life, a new mindset, a new perspective. And no matter what's happening in my life, it's just um, something that I practice and something that I, I get to share with others. Yeah. Um, and um, it's, I also remember you um, saying that it's important to share our story and it's, it's actually our responsibility to share um, what we went through and it will be um, someone else's like guide map, right? So that's what I've been doing. I've been sharing about my journey. I've shared it like twice already online. Maybe this is the third time. And what's amazing was even if I was still struggling, I think, so I, I joined the program March. Mm -hmm. End of March, I was already talking about it online. Mm -hmm. Even with the DPDR. And I'm like, this is amazing how, um, because you know, stories are powerful communication tools. And these things, stories spark up um, conversation. And so um, because I shared um, and I opened up about my journey, many others did the same. And then they, I, I get a lot of um, messages and DMs saying, hey, I, I, I'm also going through this or I can relate or thanks for sharing. Can you do a... Can you do a IG highlight so I can go back to all your notes and um, and you know what's funny it's through that storytelling that I found out that my aunt my aunt my family um, used to suffer from anxiety too and I didn't know because she she didn't speak up about it so it was only when I opened up opened up about it that she started open opening up about it and I'm like why didn't you tell me you could have been the one who helped me um, through this. Is your aunt um, get better? Is she, is she better? She yeah. is better. Wow. She is better with the same mindset as mine. Yeah. But she learned it on her own, based like just like how you learned it mm -hmm. on her own. Mm -hmm. She she didn't get um, help from doctors. Like um, she she was like so mad at them like they don't know what they're saying <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna have this forever yeah. so I'm just gonna deal with it the way I know how yeah. so I wish she I wish she spoke about it but I guess here in our country it's still you know it's still a taboo issue I've, so I've heard yeah in Philippines in particular I mean the same like you know we're in I'm I'm Indian and, and Pakistani and same like you know and I feel it, it's pretty amazing Isabel because I was the opposite I, I never wanted to tell anybody about my anxiety. I never wanted to. I, I used to say, I will take you to the grave with me. Nobody will know I went through this. And, uh, and then I just, you know, then I was like, well, what am I going to do with my life? Do I want like meaning? You know, what do I want to do that's meaningful? And then, 
Mm-hmm. So it was, you know, a few years ago. And I said, can you still hear me, by the way? Um, you're breaking up. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, don't worry okay. about it. I'm not going to talk too much. The point was I ended up sharing my story. Um, and just like you. So that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, what pushed you? What pushed you to share? I think... I think at the time, I I really started questioning, like I knew I was going to involve myself in something very deeply in some work profession or some sort. And I wanted it to have meaning. I wanted it to, I wanted to like contribute to civil society in a deep way. And so I looked at it and I said, what could I really contribute? And I felt like I knew this really well. And so I had to essentially tell myself, do you want to keep this a secret and not do what you feel like you're meant to do? Or do you push your ego to the side and share your story? And no matter what people think, they think, but you're doing it with like an honest um, heart and you know, you're going to do your best and maybe it works out and maybe it doesn't, but you honestly tried. And uh, so I decided to do the latter. And that's when I started sharing my story. And here we are. <laughs> that's, I'm that's so really glad happy. you did. Yeah. I'm so glad you did. You've helped like hundreds of us yeah. suffering. And you, you know, it's just amazing because you, you're trying to provide the right kind of help. Like it's important to get the right kind of help because there are so many um resources out there and it's kind of overwhelming to be honest to uh you know like feeling lost and not knowing how to navigate it and then finding someone who made it through the other side it's just yeah. it's just um it's almost a miracle finding you <laughs> and i'm glad i'm glad i really um met you early in my journey because mm-hmm. otherwise i might be i might still be suffering up to now yeah. Yeah. What would you, what would you tell somebody who's going through, you know, your darkest times, you know, what if, you know, cause there are people that are going to be watching this that are at that stage that, you know, you were at when you were really, you know, when it was really difficult, what would you tell, what would you tell them? Oh, I'd say, okay. Can I say like a few things? Of course. Say um, as you want. Okay, the first one would be you have to uh, understand how it works. Like knowledge, knowledge dispels fear. I see that all the time. Like if you're equipped and you know and understand what the the real problem is, then you know how to how to solve it. And you know and the solution to it will make sense to you. Um, once you understand the entire thing, because allowing and accepting didn't really make sense to me at first. I'm like, how am I going to do that? This, this is so uncomfortable. And how am I going to allow something that's going to make me feel bad or just going to make me feel worse? So I didn't understand it at first, but, you know, understanding anxiety, um, put things into perspective. So despite feeling fear, I know that I am safe. I know that I am broken. I'm not broken and I'm not crazy. And that it's not a death sentence that I will come through only if I follow and trust the process. So it's important to school yourself and educate yourself on anxiety because that's the first thing I did. I I, I wanted to understand what was going on. And it's important to... Um, have the right resources and be equipped with the right resources and tools. And um, next is, you know how some people would ask me how I uh, recovered really fast, but I would say fast is slow and slow is fast. Yeah, true. Yes, because, yes, because I was aiming for long-term recovery and everything that did not bring me to my goal, I dropped it. Right. I remember Mirka saying, stop fearing, stop fighting, stop coping. Just just stop it. 
and so I believe I believed her and I had faith in her as my mentor and coach and I just literally dropped it so no matter even if even if I had to go through um difficult symptoms every day even if I had to allow it and even if I had to go through discomfort but if will if it will give me long-term recovery then so be it like I said earlier my will and desire to live life the way I used to outweighed the momentary discomfort so I was just you know um, focused on my goal and all the coping and all the all the fixing is is I, I learned it early on that it will not bring me to long term recovery. So it's just something that I gave up on early in my journey. You just you really have to have the right formula. Yeah, I agree. And, yeah. yeah, and like I mentioned earlier, my, the mon the mantra that I that I kept with me is life is bigger than anxiety that's what you always say make life bigger than anxiety live life and your anxiety will go away just um do what you love and be out there and go live your life and i remember when i was um when i was early on in my journey i i kept score of my symptoms like oh is it a five today is it a 10 today is it a one? Oh, if it's a one then i'm getting better but then I'd have setbacks and it'll be a 10 again. And it's just so frustrating. And I'm like, I should stop doing this. Yeah. So I changed, I changed the, the scoreboard and I'm like, I kept track of life and not my symptoms. I'm like, is life winning today? Yes. Okay, good. Is life winning today? Okay, great. And so, and also I like your reminders that, oh, it's not going to be a straight line. It's not going to be a, recovery is, isn't a straight journey. It's going to be, it's, you're going to have ups and downs. And just like with life, it has ups and downs. And I'm like, I treated it like life. So I just kept score of life. So up to now, it's life one and anxiety zero. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I, that's what I uh, practiced. And um, yeah, that's basically um, well, my, what mindset I, um, I had, and, um, I had my, my symptoms January, I joined the program February and that March, April, May, May, June, I was back at work and I was able to function. I had low grade anxiety still, but I was able to function better than the first three months. And I'm like, hey, I'm making progress. So I just have to keep doing what I'm doing. So it really took time and consistency. And again, the right formula. Yeah. I did yeah. aware, I did, yeah, I had that mindset that life should be bigger than anxiety. And it took faith and it took openness and willingness to heal and recover. And that's really, that's the, it sounds easy to do, but it was really difficult for me as well. I mean, it wasn't an easy journey. It was a lot of crying and a lot of frustration, um, a lot of um, begging. <laughs> I'm like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get this over with. But I just pushed through, and I had faith in in myself and in the program. So that's how I made it out. It's amazing. Isabel, I'm so proud of you. You've done, you've done great. You've done really great. This is, this is teamwork. You, Mirka, and Kaylee, oh my gosh. I, I don't know how much patience you have because <laughs> it's so hard dealing It's so hard dealing with uh, these symptoms, um, let alone, you know, leading others through it. it was, I can't imagine how much, um, time and effort and patience you put in it, it's so a lot of it, yeah yeah it's a, it's a lot of work but you know the thing is we see ourselves in you guys you know what i mean so like what the thing is that we see it it's like what are we going to do not not help what are we not of course uh and so you know it's 
it's it doesn't feel like a job mm-hmm. you know it feels more of like a responsibility it feels and there's there's a lot of empathy because again we see ourselves you know when you were describing your story i remembered my own and mm-hmm. so and i remember how that felt and so naturally um you know, it's, it's, it's in a weird way, it's very hard, but it's also almost effortless. It's like, it, it's natural to help. And I think in a weird way, anxiety kind of connects us all like that. I think we all have a strong bond with one another because of this. Like, even though you're in a different country so far away, we mirrored so much in our experience that, you know, I feel like we're like, you know, there's like a, a, a deep level of like, you know, like, like connection with you know me you you and Mirka you and Kaylee all of us you know we're just kind of like we ha- we understand each other like very well without needing to say anything so it's natural to want to help yeah we go like you too and then we <laughs> be- became best friends <laughs> yeah. I mean I really love the community that we have because in there we celebrate each other's wins no matter how small that's like my favorite part of the community and it's kept me going it's kept me motivated throughout my journey and it really brought me hope that recovery is possible and that's why i think yeah it's it's natural for us to share about cuz cuz um if we are winning at life it's it's like inevitable you know sharing about it you it's natural it's going to come out naturally that, hey, you know what, this is what I did, and I hope this helps you, like it did for me. So, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Isabel, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Thanks, Sean. Um, I love being here, and um, keep doing what you're doing. You're helping a lot of us. (laughs) Appreciate it, appreciate it. And everybody, I'll see you in the next video.